Hi, it's Amanda. So what I want to talk about today is something that you've maybe had from a box or maybe you bought it at a store or had it at a restaurant. I'm going to show you how to make the real deal mac and cheese because it's easy AF. Okay, if you've never made mac and cheese from scratch, now is your moment. Honestly, I know I say this all the time, but this is truly a simple dish. And if you can make it from scratch, you'll taste the difference. While we're learning, we're also gonna learn a couple of really basic culinary techniques and mother sauces. Oh my God, what's a mother sauce? The cheese sauce base, which is called bechamel, is a mother sauce. And it's something in French cooking that we all learned when we started. So. It begins with a roux. Have you ever heard of that? A roux is flour and butter, and it thickens things. So we're starting off with about two tablespoons of butter, and when you make a roux, you go with even amounts, equal amounts. So if you have two tablespoons of butter, you're gonna use two tablespoons of flour. And a bechamel sauce is always made with roux and milk. Now, if you wanna get extra creamy, you could replace some of the milk with heavy cream. That's when you're really going for it. <laughs> That's when you really need some comfort food. Um, but what we do to make the roux is we let the butter melt and then we add in the flour and we're just gonna stir it with a wooden spoon. Now, cheese is a subject here that we need to talk about. I'm going really classic in this one. I'm gonna use cheddar, it's already grated, or you can get a really sharp block of cheddar and grate it yourself. And I'm gonna use some Parmigiano, Reggiano. Uh, I love Parmesan for its saltiness and its sweetness. I really, I put it in almost everything. <laughs> you can use Munster cheese, pepper jack, Swiss, Gruyere, uh, goat cheese, feta cheese, blue cheese. You can use any cheese you like. You can use a blend of cheeses. Honestly, you can go crazy on creativity. That's kind of why I like this recipe so much because you can make it your own. Like I always say, recipes are just a guideline. Learn how to make this, know what you're looking for, and then put your twist on it. Okay, so we're looking for bubbly butter. We don't want it to get brown. There are brown or black roux that we use in culinary world, but not, not today, not here. Okay, can you hear it? Can you hear the butter is bubbling? I'm gonna put in about two tablespoons. They're heaping. You know me, I don't like to measure too exact. And you just stir it together. Now, what you want this to look like, and I'm gonna show it to you in a second, is wet sand. And you have to cook this a little bit. You have to cook, and you're gonna go on low heat now because you don't wanna toast the flour, unless you want this to taste really toasty. Um, so what you have to do is cook it so that the flour is not raw, because if you don't cook it now, once the milk goes in, the flour will not have an opportunity to cook. So this is where you're cooking the flour. Okay, we're gonna turn it down a little more. And what I didn't tell you is I've already cooked the macaroni. You always have to have the macaroni pre-cooked before making the sauce and adding it together. You know, for me, I've always made homemade just because that's a chef -y thing to do. Um, but the, the box stuff isn't bad. I like it. So it's kind of the same process. Now I'm putting the milk in and you heard a lot of bubbling going on. And now I'm using a whisk. So I switch from wooden spoon to whisk. Why do I need a whisk now? Because I don't want any lumps. I don't want any lumpy flour in here at all. And I just need to whisk it out so that the flour cubes, but lumps, bumps, they melt. And they start to combine with the milk and they'll thicken the milk. Now, a bechamel sauce can be used for many other things. It can be used to make a lot of Greek dishes. It can be used to make other sauces. You start with a, a base sauce and then you add things to it. It's definitely an old school style sauce, but really it is your best base for any cheese sauce. Even if you're making like nachos and you want to make a cheese sauce, this is where you start. Or a fondue that you really want to hold up and not break. <laughs> break! I almost broke the bowl. Okay, so the milk is together with the butter and the flour. I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit and I want you to see it. So I'm gonna get my towel. 
Okay, because you're cooking along with me, right? I want you to see what's going on here. It's not thick yet, but it will be. And just keep in mind that what happens is once the cheese goes in, it's gonna thicken up and you're gonna panic, but don't panic because that's exactly what's supposed to happen. It'll thicken up and it'll get really gooey and cheesy and fatty. So it's gonna go through some changes. It's gonna happen pretty quickly. So today I'm just gonna, when it's finished, put it in a bowl and eat it, but you could also bake it, okay? You're gonna do exactly what we're doing here, put it in the bowl, put it in a casserole dish, and then bake it. Now, we could put bacon in it, which I love, bacon and mac and cheese, and what I would have done, I would have used the bacon fat in place of the butter. That's what I would have started it with. You can put broccoli, I love broccoli and mac and cheese, and broccoli with cheddar cheese sauce, which you just learned how to make, is such a delicious treat as well. Okay, so what we're looking for is the sauce to get thick, and there's a couple of different ways to gauge it and see if it's thick enough, see if it's cooked enough. And we have this classic technique that we use when we learn how to make this sauce. And we put a spoon inside of the sauce, coat the back of the spoon, and then run your finger down it. Now, that is not exactly what I want. I want the sauce to hang out a little more on the sides of the spoon, but that's a good test. If it doesn't run into the center, you're good. Okay, so now we have boil, we have a boil. That's exactly what you want. Okay, now we have it. Now we're there, and it doesn't take much time at all. And that you're gonna just learn what to look for because you're gonna say, Amanda, what, how long, how many minutes? I want you to learn what to look for. This looks like a really thick, creamy sauce already, but as soon as that cheese hits, we are done. Okay. In goes the cheddar. Now, when I put the cheddar in, we're gonna turn it back on, but we're gonna go really low. And I'm getting rid of this whisk, and I'm going back to my wooden spoon because I just wanna stir it in gently, okay? If I was to whisk the cheese, it would get caught in the whisk, and we just want this to get caught in the sauce. Okay, so in goes the cheddar. Oh my God. And so when I make this, I like to make it a little extra saucy. I like to add more cheese sauce than I normally would to a mac and cheese because I see how it absorbs it, right? Once you put it in the bowl and then you put the breadcrumb on top, it can become dry. We don't want that. We want saucy, saucy mac and cheese. Oh, and that cheddar cheese has melted and it looks so delicious. We should taste it. Right? We haven't tasted it. We didn't season it. It tastes delicious, but we didn't season it. So even though the cheddar cheese has salt inside of it already, the milk didn't, the flour didn't, the butter didn't. So we're going to go with two nice pinches of salt and a couple of really good cracks of pepper. And again, if you wanted to add some cayenne to this right now, this is when you would do it. Okay? And what happens when you add Parmesan, and you'll notice this if you're ever making pasta and you make pan sauces, as soon as you add the Parmesan, it thickens there too. So I'm just using my microplane. I don't know if you guys have this tool at home. I love this tool. It makes beautiful, fine Parmesan. Uh, you can do this ahead of time. You can buy already grated, of course, but you know, Mainly I want the cheddar flavor, but the Parmesan just brings up the salt level. And I don't know if you've noticed, but Parmesan has a sweetness to it that I really, really like. Okay, and this is where you could put all those other cheeses, Swiss or Blue or Gruyere or Taleggio or Fontina, if you want that funky, funky flavor. Okay, now again, I'm gonna taste it. So taste it as you go, because you wanna know that your sauce is good. If you were stopping right here, mm, you would just have your cheese sauce and you can save it for other things. Like I said, bake it on broccoli, put it on potatoes. I mean, there's so many things you can do with cheese sauce. Okay, so I have about two cups of already cooked macaroni. You could use more or less. You could add different shapes of pasta. I've made this with orzo. I've made this with fusilli. 
You can add any shape of pasta you like. Obviously, I want to show you the classic, really, really classic, and look at that cheesiness. Okay, I'm gonna put this to the camera because you have to see what's happening. Look at that, it's really, really saucy. I wanted that, but I do need a little more pasta in here for sure. Um, <laughs> why not? Now I have extra. Oh, it's terrible to have extra mac and cheese around. Um, so I'm just going to stir that in. Again, I could tell because I've made this so many times that this needed more pasta. And there we go. That's the consistency we're looking for. I still want it to be really surrounded by sauce, but I don't want it to be too loose. Okay. And now we're going to serve it up. And again, this is what you would do right before you bake it. You would put it into an oven ready dish, put some breadcrumb on top, and then just bake it till that breadcrumb is golden. But I've already toasted my breadcrumb. Ooh, that's a, that's a hearty portion. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on top and maybe even finish with a little Parmesan. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Comfort food has been my savior. This is amazing. This is a classic mac and cheese and it's easy AF.